Okay, on first glance, this example might look very similar to the previous example. We have two carts, and one of them is moving at the start of the problem, and they hit each other and are at some point stuck together. But the really important distinction between this example and the previous one is that the first thing that happens in this problem is not the collision, but just the one four kilogram cart moving around in the problem, moving around in a way that we can track its energy. So in this example, the third two-step problem that we have, the first step here is not the collision, but is instead an energy balance problem. And to be really clear, the situation is one where we have a cart moving at the top of the hill with an initial speed, and it's high up on the hill, where that initial speed is four meters per second. And then just that one cart, an energy problem can only follow a single system, just that one cart rolls downhill, still just the four kilogram cart, and is now moving with some final speed. The height here is 20 centimeters, so 0 0.2 meters, just like before. And our before situation is at the top of the hill, before. And our after situation is here at the bottom of the hill, after. And so we can set up our standard energy problem before and after where the only mass that we are looking at is the four kilogram mass. We're looking if it has potential energy from gravity, we're looking if it has potential energy from a spring, and we're looking to see if it has kinetic energy as well as if there's a work term. So while I'm down here writing it, work term, we're looking for a push or a pull, friction, air resistance. We don't have any of those external forces that don't already have um, a term here. In the before situation, we ask ourselves, are we moving? Never meant to be a trick question. We are given that speed, and so absolutely we are moving at the start of the problem. Are we higher at the start of the problem? We are. We're at the top of the hill, MGH and there's no spring. At the end of the problem, we ask ourselves, are we moving? We are definitely moving because we are about to collide with that three kilogram block. So we have one half m v final squared, where that final is just the cart, the four kilogram cart at the bottom of the hill. We are not higher at the end and there are no springs at the end. So when we think about our standard energy problem, energy before, oops, energy before, plus work added, equals energy after, we can follow our nice table of, um, terms. So energy before is one half m v initial squared plus m g h plus zero. The work term, because we said no, we can just write zero. And then the energy after is one half m v final squared plus zero plus zero. Okay, we can plug in the, equi the numbers that we have. So we have one half times four kilograms, times moving at four meters per second squared, plus four kilograms times 9.8, times a height of 0 0.2. And then that equals one half times four times V final squared. Okay, this entire left side, we can plug into our calculator. I'm not gonna stop and write down the two separate um, terms because we can do that and then add them. I'm just going to do the whole the whole left side I'm going to get 
And then on the right side, 1 half times 4 is 2, the final squared. So we can, multi or we can divide both sides by 2. So we get 19.92 is equal to v final squared, which means to get the speed of that thing at the bottom of the hill, we need to take the square root of both sides. And so what we get when we do that is 4.46. So v final here is 4.46 meters per second at the bottom of the hill. OK. Now, just like in the previous situations, what we have found is not the end of the problem. It is simply how fast that four kilogram card is moving right before the collision. The end of step one becomes the start of step two. All right, so if we need to, we can pause to make sure we have everything on this step one, because I'm gonna have to erase part of it for um, space. All right, so our step two is the three kilogram cart is not moving. The four kilogram cart is about to hit it and it's moving. So M1 is three kilograms. V1 initial is zero. And this is for step two. Oh, I didn't write it, sorry. Step two is the collision, which means we need momentum. Okay, so the three kilogram block is at rest, so zero meters per second. This other cart is not moving at four meters per second, it is moving at 4.44. So that's the initial speed for step two, is the 4.46 meters per second. It was able to speed up a little bit as it rolled downhill. Now we're told that they stick together, and so just like before, stick together, means that v1 final is equal to v2 final, and we might as well call it v final final to make it really obvious that it's the end of the two-step problem. And so to have it stand out, I'll write the momentum conservation equation in red, m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial equals m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final and then I'll plug in numbers. So we have three times zero plus four times 4.46 is equal to three V final final plus four V final final. Okay, erase some more space for us. All right, so on the left side, we have 17.8. Okay. And on the right side, three V finals plus four V finals is seven V finals. We divide both sides by seven. And we will get 2.55 meters per second is our final velocity. And this is now after the collision. So this is after the collision. So the final speed of all of this, and it's worth noting that I did not put a negative sign here. I probably should have. But if we think about um, me Flipping this, so if I were um, thinking about this as the four kilogram cart's the only thing moving, so I could pretend it's moving 
Now we can't see it, but I can pretend it's moving to the right. I could use the positive sign because I'm not inconsistent here. But if we wanted to, if we wanted to make left the negative direction, that would be a reasonable way to do it. We would have a negative sign here. We would have a negative sign here and here. And so our final velocity would also be negative. It would be to the left. With the wording of the problem, the final speed, that minus sign doesn't need to be there. And as long as we know that there was only one thing moving, then that would have been a perfectly valid option. What's more important than deciding that left or right is positive or negative is recognizing that things moving in the same direction have the same sign and opposite directions have opposite signs. But it's fair to be consistent. I should have probably put that minus sign to begin with, um, but we can have that conversation now instead. So the end result, the speed of the carts would be 2.55 meters per second without the plus or minus anyway but the velocity would be to the left, and so a minus sign or the words to the left, both are a way to describe that. So as always, if you have questions, um, rewatch this video, go to um, online office hours or talk in the discussion boards or by email, and make sure to compare this problem where energy was the first step with the other two step problems so we can see the similarities and the differences. I will see you in the ne next example.